The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Ambar Garcia, Brian Broadus, Patrick Walker, and Derek Eagleton. It is Wednesday, March 27th, 2024, season 19, episode number 117. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break. We are live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. Got Brian and Amber here. Patrick's out today, but we'll hold it down. We've got lots of different topics that have been floating around uh, the Cowboys universe that we'll get into today. We'll talk about some rules changes around the NFL. We'll talk about the DAC, con- uh, the DAC contract and, uh, and what we've kind of been hearing uh, in that way. I think there's some things I want to clear up about that, but we'll have some conversations on that. Um, and then we'll talk about free agency um, after the dust is settled now in that first wave of free agency uh, kind of giving a big picture of where the Cowboys are where their 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 positions are of need and what they are really looking at now as they head into latter parts of free agency and the draft to really round out their uh, their roster before we get here to uh, to training camp in July all right so let's start first I want to I want to start first with the NFL rules changes I'm going to go through some of these, and, and I have some different thoughts on it, but I want to get your your ideas on, on kind of what you think. Let's start first with that hip drop uh, rule. Uh, basically, it's a move, it's a maneuver that they they want to get out of the game. Uh, it obviously can lead to some, some pretty gruesome injuries. We've seen that happen. Um, the question for me, though, that I have for you guys is, is this a fair rule for defensive players? Because as you're running, so if a runner gets behind you, what else can you really do in order to, to tackle them, especially if the guy is bigger than you are? Let's say it's a defensive back and you're trying to tackle Derrick Henry. How fair is that you now can't use your body weight to be able to pull him back when he's a big guy and has a full head of steam ahead of you? Yeah, it's difficult. Uh, it's never easy for a defender to have to approach a ball carrier from behind and, and try and make because everything now is, it seems, a bad situation, whether it's horse collar mm-hmm. and now the the hip tackle. Um you know, but I'm for it. I'm for it because I, you know, I I understand it's a technique. There's some guys that are really good defensively of wrapping up, taking their weight, and throwing them in the back of the legs or the back of a ball carrier. Mm. And we've seen it on a couple different levels. The Ravens lost their tight end last year to one. We've seen the Cowboys with Dak Prescott in his situation, how he got tackled that one time in the Giants game. Um, you know, it's it's a dangerous maneuver. Is it fair for the defenders nowadays? No, it's not. You know, the defenders seem to be getting all the rule changes against them, whether it's contact rules, uh, hands to the face, whatever rule that you want to make against a defensive player. But to me, this is like the horse collar one. I feel like it's it's it, the spirit of it is the right way. Um, I don't have a great answer for you as far as what do you do differently because it is it's a tough way. If you're behind a, a ball carrier, there's really how else you're going to get a guy down. You maybe grab on, hold on, and and hope that everybody else helps you. But man, uh, we've seen some pretty significant violent injuries. I mean, Dak Prescott got hit in the pocket against the Lions, you know, in a same kind of manner. And with, uh, you know, with, uh, with Hutchinson, Aiden Hutchinson with a hip kind of tackle and Dak was able to kind of get his legs up Mm -hmm. feet up and, you know, and not have to suffer that. And you can only imagine him having to deal with that again. And, you know, Cowboy fans all going, my gosh, here, here we go again. Um, But there's no, there's no right answer here, but I am, I'm all about that part of the game because I think there is some violence to it that hopefully can be avoided in the future. I've seen a lot of people online, fans being really upset and saying, oh, might as well just play flag football. Yeah. And But when you look at the grand scheme of things, I mean, I think it, it is for the better of just player health in general. And, you know, it sucks when you lose a key player it, it, not just for that team, but just for the level of the game that you're playing. You want to be playing against good players yeah. because that makes it a lot more exciting. Now, it is going to be tough to retrain that and, and apply these types of changes. We've seen it when um, 
a, a defender is attacking the qu- quarterback and, you know, hitting them or getting too close. And, the head, and those, the, look, those the legs, hits, yeah. Some of those are just insane, yeah. some of those calls. But at the same time, um, it is hard to be mindful of that when you're going through the motion and the movements. You know, when you're playing a game, you, you tend to just – react and go for it and you're not thinking of where my hand placement these things happen so fast that i think it's just it's gonna take some time to really get to a point where it's clean and and you don't get called or other injuries further injuries don't happen i think it's just gonna take time for players to get used to you know the the one in the one tackle that bothers me and and the hip tackle bothers me you know, I, I would hate, like I said, I hate to, I would hate to lose players. I'd hate to be on the player personnel side or the coaching side and lose a star player because of that, you know. But it's a tackle. The one that bothers me the most are receivers coming across, tight ends coming across the middle of the field, and these defensive backs are going for their knees. That's the one that, you know, that I really, really cringe about. If, if, they, if they would have said, oh, at the owner's meeting, we're going to – eliminate we're going to penalize we're going to talk about defensive backs going at pass catchers knees now you got me really really interested because I think that's the one that that's that's defenseless right there you're catching the ball you're coming across and now you've got a defensive back at a maybe a five to seven yard run and going at your knees to try and get you on the ground. Yeah, I've that's heard, the one that that's the one that always got me. Yeah, I've heard offensive guys say, and, "Hit and me in the is, head." Yeah, and want, this yeah. is this isn't yeah. right, and no, nor should yeah. it be the way right. they do it. But I've heard offensive guys say, "Man, I'd rather you protect my knees yeah. than worry about my head." Yeah. and I actually would. I actually wonder in that instance if the the right answer is the cow. I mean the uh, the the officiating committee should really look at it as there's a strike zone, essentially. And right. the strike zone is just above the knee right. and below the head, right? And that's the area where you can hit a defenseless receiver or you can right. hit a receiver when they're in the air, when they're right. trying to catch a ball. That That's the area. That's the strike zone. Anything above or below that gets you a penalty. I think right. that's probably a smart way to do it to protect those guys' knees because you're right. When you're, when you're not seeing that guy and he hits your knees – you can have some very serious you have injuries. Some, in that you way. have some yeah. significant injuries there, and I, and I like what you're talking about with the strike zone. But you know, you have receivers that have different height. Yeah. You know, there's some tall guys, there's some short guys, depending on if they're wide receivers, if they're tight ends. That strike zone, I guess it's it's different for every player, but maybe that's something that should be reviewable. Right. You know, if you go, it's you know, we we love college football, and they have the targeting rules. Mm-hmm. You know, and it stops the game for a few minutes, but you know, you learn about okay. Yes, he went with a shoulder legal hit. No, he led with the head. Right. He's 15 yards and out, mm-hmm. you know? And so I, 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 anything like that to police the game, I'm okay with. Let's look at an, another rule change. They actually changed the, uh, the, thir- the challenges to where now coaches yeah. are able to get a third challenge if they get one of the first two correct instead of before it was you had to have both correct right. in order to get a third one. I, I think that rule is fine. I don't have a problem mm-hmm. with it. My bigger question is, does college get it right better than the NFL yes. from the standpoint of having somebody in the booth yes. who literally can just review anything. We've yes. been saying this for years <laughs> yes. now. They absolutely can. Because it hasn't slowed down the game, it, right? It, it, no, you know, we, we've we've had some college football games that have lasted four hours or yeah. so. We've had, you know. But, we, but is it just because of that? Like, No, it, it's just because of all the stoppage after first downs. Yeah, right. You know, and now they've kind of eliminated that, so the games have gotten a little bit quicker. Television wants a three-hour game. Yeah. And so, you know, you have to try and give As them a, a fan, th- I'll take a four-hour game. But yeah, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. But the thing, we just want to get it right. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I, I do feel like, though, the ability to buzz down, you know, and to say, hey, listen, we need to review that play. I do feel like that that is the best. Because we've got coaches, honestly, that don't know when to challenge. And maybe they challenge too much. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe they challenge at the wrong time. And if you take it out of their hands that way, maybe, you know, maybe you could – you know, you get it right more than yeah. not, you know. But I, I'm, I'm, I, I applaud what college football does with the ability to buzz down and say, "Hey, listen, I need to review this one. Yeah. Just give me a minute to look at it." And usually they get it right. Yeah, that's what I've never understood. When you have, when you watch college football, why not take the things that do work or seem to be yeah. good from it and mm-hmm. apply it to the NFL? Like that's the one thing I, I've. 
I still don't understand until this day because I think well, college football does do a lot of good things that do, are better yeah, than the NFL. They do a lot of good things, and, and, and I'm sure Derek is about to get into a, a rule that you, you're going to take from the XFL. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, so that sometimes it, you know, the NFL for so many years is we've done it this way. We're not, I, I mean, the longer you guys have worked in it long enough that when the operations manual comes out about what's going on with the league, it's they could take the date and just erase it and put the new date on there and send it. <laughs> and it's the same thing over and over and yeah. over and over and over again. And you're like, okay. But, uh, yeah, that's, they're, 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 they're slow to adjust to things in the NFL. They're just, yeah. They don't want to mess with it that much. My thing is getting a call right should never be a matter of strategy. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And that's what it is right now. Coaches yeah. are having to strategize on yeah. when should I throw, yeah. when should yeah. I not. Yeah. <clears throat> that should never be a strategy thing. That should always be, we just want to get it right because right. the calls need to be right. right. And that's where I think college gets it right. Now, where the NFL, as you mentioned, yeah. has been willing to move is in their kickoff. And yeah. they've, been, they've been doing things to take the kickoff out of the game, in my opinion, for mm -hmm. many years now because of the the safety of players. And mm -hmm. and I know when, when I was coming up, and Brian, you probably went through this and you were coming up playing football, uh, special teams was a special thing. Like, you yeah. get on special teams, that was where you figured out just how tough you really were because you were just going to run full speed. You probably down had a screw loose playing yeah. special teams. It was, yeah. it was a challenge. And the, the NFL has taken that. They've been trying to take that more and more out of the game because it is very dangerous. I think they did something really good here in trying to figure out, okay, we still want to keep the excitement, mm -hmm. but we want to limit the the uh, the 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 potential violence. Yeah, and I think in this way, uh, with the new rules around the kickoff, what it does is essentially takes away that full speed collision yeah. that happens, and it still gives the excitement of possible returns. And I think actually makes it better. What are you guys' thoughts on that? And how much do you think this is an advantage for the Cowboys based upon what they have as far as players and their special teams coach? Watched a few XFL games with this, so the way it operates. If you've got a ball carrier or a returner that can make someone miss initially, you get through that first wave, mm -hmm. it's onto the kicker. Mm -hmm. You know, you could you could have some seriously good returns mm -hmm. uh, just by if you get everybody blocked up and you've got a ball carrier that has vision, has some elusiveness, has some quickness, because it's tough as they're coming down in a, in a line. You know, it's you pop that one, and now where's the where's the support? Mm -hmm. It's a kicker who's standing back there, kind of, you know, waiting for you know whatever happens. I've seen some really good returns. You would think that there wouldn't be good returns, but they're really worth some. You know, and I, you know, if but if you have to, if you have a guy now, I could also see with the ball going out to the thirty-five yard line, if somebody's really bad at this kickoff stuff. Just keep pumping the ball into the end zone, right. and you know, and do yeah. what you instead of kick it out. Just kick, kick it, it instead out of the, of the ball being yeah. on the twenty-five. Yeah. It's on the thirty-five. Yeah. You know, yeah. and we're not we're we're that bad covering these things, and we're not going to let Turpin bring back three <laughs> kicks during a game on us. Yeah. You know, so if the ball keeps getting past midfield, I'm telling my kicker, kick it out of the damn end zone here. Yeah. I'm not going to. We're yeah. not going to cover any more kicks. Yeah. So there'll be a strategy with this. Yeah. You'll see who's really love. you'll see who's really good at it, and then the teams that are really bad will just go ahead and kick the ball in the end zone every single time and say we'll play defense from the thirty-five. Yep. Yeah, I think it's a it's an exciting new change, and I'm really looking forward to it because over the years since I started working here, every year it just seemed to get more and more boring. Like nothing exciting. Well, the Super Bowl was a good example of that. Every kickoff went into the end zone mm -hmm. was a touchback. I yep. mean, nobody wants to. Nobody's watching. Yeah, nobody's yeah, watched that, yeah. that. Yeah. But now it brings a different element where you have a real chance, a real opportunity to yeah. make a game changing play and move so it, i'm looking forward to it yeah when you think about it essentially what you're doing is you're playing defense without linebackers or a secondary right you only have one line of defense right and if you can get past that one line of defense that's, you that, got an you got a chance yep. so that's where it's going to get really interesting right. and i love it for the cowboys because i look at a guy like turpin right and that's what turpin does he right. has the speed and the elusiveness and he's to always be able like to get right through there. that one you guy feel right like he, he's right. right there and it's the waves that usually trip him up right it's not the first guy he usually can yeah. get past that first guy it's yeah. the waves of guys that are coming at him that eventually get to him. 
I want to see how this works for him. And I love the fact that the Cowboys have a special teams coach who's extremely creative because I think yeah. those who are really creative, especially in this first year, they're going to see the greatest success, not only on the kickoff returns, also on the kickoffs. I think there's some strategy to that as well. Yeah. And I think he'll be thoughtful about that. And I think we can see some really cool stuff that may happen for the Cowboys on special teams right. this year. All right, final one I wanted to get to, trade deadline move back one week. I don't know that it makes much of a difference one week, but Brian, you're a personnel guy. Yeah. You're a former personnel guy. How much of does that one week help uh, when it comes to, to being able to have trades for one more week? Yeah, I think the NFL for so many years was worried about teams getting to the trade deadline and not having any hope. And all of a sudden you fire sell your team. Mm -hmm. You know, And now you know, I, I do feel like, though, that by moving it back a week, that maybe you give everybody an opportunity to look at the quarterback situation too. I always kind of felt like there needed to be a different trade deadline for quarterbacks because sometimes you get to week nine, week 10, and you're like, you know, we got six more weeks to play and we're in the hunt here, but we just lost our quarterback. You know, if you gave me the flexibility of going out and getting somebody, I, I would welcome that a lot. So yeah, I, I, any, anything to give you more time to look at your roster and say, listen, we're not going anywhere. You know, we're going to get some compensatory picks. We're going to pick pretty high. Maybe we can move on from a guy, you know, if the, the cap, if it makes sense for your cap. Then that's where I think that – I think both teams will benefit from that. The team that's receiving the player will benefit because of, of the efforts that they're making to go get the guy. And the team trading will say, okay, we're not going anywhere. We just got a premium pick for a, a a player, and now we're going to use that for next year. I like it. Yeah. I actually kind of wish they would allow teams to have that fire sell because I think that adds <laughs> excitement when you allow teams that are in the hunt yeah. to kind of improve their team, a little more time to do that, yeah. and teams that are out of it to say, hey, if we're out of it, maybe there's an opportunity for us to get better right now right. from the standpoint of getting rid of some pieces, but yeah. now going into next offseason, we got a little more capital to work with. I actually think that's a good thing, and it's exciting for well, fans. It's funny you say that because you know my other job working on 105.3 The Fan, we have to talk about baseball. Yeah. And last year, they had a situation where the, uh, the Anaheim, the Angels, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, or whatever you want to call them out there, they, they did a fire sale. And they put all their they put all their guys on waivers. Cleveland, by a by a mechanism, Cleveland the Guardians were able to claim all the players. So they got all the guys. So all of a sudden they're getting pitching. They're getting you know they're getting all these things that they and nobody else had the option to get mm -hmm. these guys. So all of a sudden you're thinking here we are in a, in a and Cleveland with the time was in a in a pennant race was trying to win the division, and. Other teams are like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You just shifted the balance of power mm -hmm. towards, you know. So sometimes the fire sale, I'm with you on it. I'm also, though, please give me the opportunity to, like, claim a guy or two. Don't don't let <laughs> – Don't let every, one don't team let have my, everybody. Don't let yeah. my competitor get every single player. There are ways you can build that. You can I build hope. mechanisms into I it. Hope. I think the salary cap in the NFL will be the biggest detractor yeah. from somebody yeah. being able to just pick up yeah. – for someone to be able to dump their team yeah. and somebody else to pick up the whole team. I think that – is, is what you try to guard against. But I do think it's exciting for fans. Oh, trade deadlines in the bas in basketball and baseball, in my opinion, are far more exciting oh, yeah. than trade deadlines in the NFL. And I think it's because it happened so early in the NFL yeah. relative right. to those other leagues. Right. But it's definitely good that they pushed it. I wish it was longer, honestly. I wish it would come at week 11 around there, 12, 11. Like December 1st? Even <laughs> I'd be okay you with that. Know, yeah. <laughs> I'd be See, okay that's with that. what I'm saying. Right, like, because that's exactly right at the point where you're like, okay, we're either going this way yeah, or that right. way. Oh, no. But it's, you're still in it. You don't know what the result is going to yeah. be, and you really could use some kind of trade right now. Yeah, the, the one thing that we all know that working in this organization, as long as we have, is we know what this team is after Thanksgiving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you yep. know, and you, you, you're kind of sitting there thinking, well, if we'd had this player on December 1st, you know, maybe this guy could help us make that run. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I'm totally with I just you. think it would be exciting. It's, it's more of a selfish fan thought in my yeah. mind. I know there's a lot of mechanisms you'd have to think about from the business part of it, but right. I just think from a fan standpoint it would be exciting because I do think teams would, would do exactly what we're thinking, that those that are in the hunt 
would make themselves better. Right. Those that are not would be looking for ways to be able to improve their chances yeah. in the offseason. There was a couple of times there when we were covering that Tony Romo team that get, when he got hurt, yeah. that we were ready to trade all the players <laughs> at the end of it. We yeah. were just, maybe we could trade every one of these guys and we don't have to cover this team And we anymore. just start over next year. Yeah, we'll, we'll start just, over next year. We'll see it. We'll, we'll see call it a season. season. Yeah, we'll see Thanks, it. guys. We'll, yeah, check out the draft guide <laughs> and we'll have three days of draft coverage for you and we'll, we'll, and that's we'll, it. we'll do what we have to do. Well, we, uh, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to talk Dak. We're going to talk about his contract. There were some things that came out over the last couple of days. We'll discuss that when we come back. DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot, Rowdy, cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app, only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear Doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a shoulder to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say, give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks girl, better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you back to the break whether it's spring break vacation or staycation dallas cowboys pro shops have you covered score fresh outfits like tees swimwear loungewear mm. and more at your nearest pro shop online at shop dallas shot dot dallas cowboys.com <laughs> you up there huh? hey fanatics experience <laughs> let me try this again whether it's spring break vacation or a staycation the dallas cowboys pro shops have you covered score fresh outfits like tea swimwear loungewear and more mm. at your uh nearest pro shop or online at shop dot dallas cowboys.com a fanatics experience welcome back it is the second segment of the break we are live from the swbc mortgage studios at the star the segment brought to you by blockchain.com First time I've gotten that right in uh, the last two shows, so I'm very proud of myself. Yeah, you're doing better. I am. I'm getting better <laughs> yeah. at this thing. Uh, let's talk about Dak Prescott. There was a report that came out from Ian Rappaport uh, that was saying, and I think there. Let me just kind of. I want to clear some stuff up because I think there was a the the statement that mm-hmm. Ian put out gave a lot of people the the impression that the Cowboys were basically saying. Uh, we don't want to sign Dak to a, a right. deal. We're comfortable just letting him go into next year and uh, and go into free agency, and we'll deal with it from there. I don't think that's necessarily what yeah. they were trying to say. I think there's been some some more reporting that's happened since then that's kind of clarified that. Yes. I think the whole point of it is they've had some extension discussions. Um, and I think the point of it is, in my opinion, there really is no pressure from either side to get a deal done. I don't think either side is really pushing like, I got to move off of my position right now mm-hmm. in order to get a deal done. I think they both kind of have what they expect. And I think they're sitting there and they're like, well, you know, we'll just kind of let this thing play out and we'll see where it goes. What I don't think it is, is that the Cowboys are satisfied at this point just to say he's going to be a free agent. I think there's still the chance that he gets a deal done this offseason. There's still a chance maybe he gets a deal done in season. I yeah. just don't think either team, either side, is really at a point yet where they are ready to just yeah. move off of their position no, you're to right. get a deal done. Yeah, Josina Anderson, who uh, covers yep. the league, and you know, I don't know if you saw her. Yeah, I saw her tweet, yeah. Yeah, you know, and her tweet was, and I'm reading it from her actual tweet, 
Regarding the Cowboys and Dak Prescott, I'm told the team does intend to work out a contract for their three-time Pro Bowl quarterback and has also not closed off potential to consummate a deal for him this year per source. Mm -hmm. Uh, While there's currently no offer or intimate talks, uh, the team has not presently charted a path to let Prescott go to free agency despite some chatter to the contrary, I'm told. So that, you know, I think she's on to something yep. here. Uh, she's plugged in. We had on uh, Nick Harris, who the very talented mm-hmm. reporter for DallasCowboys.com, yesterday on the 105.3 The Fan on the G-Bag Nation, and he th- threw out a theory that he had. And I, I've learned this over the years working for you guys. These walls talk sometimes. And I, I asked him a question, and he was talking about, listen, think about maybe something in November. You know, Nick's a smart guy. Mm-hmm. Nick's probably heard some things. Nick's probably got some ideas of, you know, maybe November's. And I like that. That's the first time I've kind of heard that. You know, you've got uh, what's going to happen maybe next year, uh, you know, as you get towards closer towards free agency, that possibility as well. So I don't think this thing is closed off. I will say this, and Bobby Belt and I had this conversation if I'm the Cowboys, though, I don't let him get to free agency. Mm-hmm. That's 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 it. All those things that I said about what Josina said and what you know I just talked about and what Nick Harris said are all true. But if this thing gets to free agency, I think all bets are off then. Mm-hmm. For me personally, you know that's just how I feel like it. But I feel like that those guys upstairs, the guys and the gals that work on these contracts, I think they'll do everything they can, and I think Dax Camp will try and do the same. Yeah, I think it's an it's a very interesting situation because, and we've seen it before, where even with his first time extension, um, that we it felt like it took too long, you know, to happen, and then it gets dragged out, and then it gets there, and then time passes. You're like, man, they should have done that probably sooner. Yeah. So it's just it does take me back to thinking that maybe we're sitting here several months from now thinking, oh, they really should have taken care of that in free agency this year, um, around this time right now, and get that done. But it also presents the option of allowing yourself to give you some time. And I know that the Cowboys are fully bought into Dak. They've said it once. They've repeatedly said this. They want Dak as their quarterback long-term and extend him. But at the same time, Personally, and I've said it before in previous shows that I'm like, I wouldn't be opposed to waiting it out and see when free agency hits just because it gives me one more excitement. I'm like, oh, let's see how this turns (laughs) out. Oh, my God. Once again, selfish fan. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yes. Um, And I love Dak and I want him here. But it's like, okay, last year it was a a career year for him Mm -hmm. where we saw him really take a next step, I thought. And this year, it would allow me to just either confirmation as to, okay, yes, I'm a thousand percent, let's ride this wave, even when the team, because we know a lot is at stake this year. So if you're going to start making a bunch of changes, are you wanting him as your quarterback to stay here while you restructure the whole team, knowing that McCarthy is on his last year, knowing Mike Zimmer, one year deal? knowing that a lot of things might change if you don't get to the right. Super Bowl or, yeah, pretty and much. And if you do, yeah. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. yeah. So I I see both sides. I see benefits to both sides to getting it done as soon as possible, but also allowing yourself to kind of get a, a another extra peek, sneak peek of what he has this year. Yeah, I would say right now, I would still say it's probably 85% chance that the Cowboys and Dak Prescott get a long-term deal and Mm -hmm. he ends up being here. Now, one thing I I would say, Ryan, you said there's no way I would let him get the free agency. I agree with that. There's one caveat I have to that. And this is, the I think, the little thing that's lurking in the back of a lot of people's minds is, what is Trey Lance? You went out and you got him. Well, yeah. You went out and you got him, mm-hmm. and you're going to have this whole offseason with him. Now, they've been evaluating him since yes. he got here. So yes. they've been seeing what yes. he is. Yes. They'll, they'll go through this offseason. They'll yeah. see what he is. They'll get to training camp. They'll see yeah. what he is. Yes. They'll hell it and play in some preseason games. Yes. They'll see what he is. If they think, and this will be their determination, if they think Trey Lance is a player and they think he has the capability to be a good starting quarterback in this league, That gives them some flexibility because now you may still want to sign Dak, but it does in the back of your mind make you say, eh, 
we're not willing yeah. to go above our budget to do that yeah. because we feel like we got an option. Right. Yeah. And right now, I don't know if they can say they have an option. I don't know if any of us feel. I certainly don't feel comfortable yeah. saying you got an option. But they will have that determination to make as they go through this offseason and go through the preseason and into the season to determine whether they think Trey Lance is a player or not. And that will, I think, also color their decision on how much they're willing to give. Not if they'll give him a deal, because I think they'll offer Dak a deal and they want Dak to be here. Mm-hmm. How much they're willing to give, I think, will depend on what they think Trey Lance is. Man, it's just such a slippery slope that these teams now navigate because if you have a quarterback that's on a rookie deal, that extra $40 million makes a huge Absolutely. difference on your team. There's so many things that you can do right now if you, you know, and that's why everybody says, hey, you got to you got to find a way to to get things done when that quarterback's not getting paid $50 million. And I think there's, you know, there's people out there too that, you know, uh, I think Kirk Cousins, you look what he got with Atlanta. Now, I know he's a few years older than Dak, but there's a lot of similarities between the two guys. They're both capable quarterbacks. They both win in the regular season. You know, they both seem like they're into the MVP conversations. Every They have MVP moments yeah. where they play at a very, very high level. But here's one making $45 million, and the other's looking to maybe make $60 million. You know, that's the thing about it is you have to – and I, I've said this before about the Cowboys. I, I just really believe this. You know, with the way the front office is structured here, they should just continually roll the quarterback through. Just just keep trying to churn the quarterback, you know, and, and play on these rookie deals if you can. Because to me, it's man, it's when you look at how well they draft and how well they okay, they have to pay, it seems like everybody, you know. You know, having that extra $40 million would go a long way right now for the Cowboys when it comes to Michael Parsons and it comes to CeeDee Lamb and, and others that they're going to have to, to to deal with here. So to me, if I'm if I'm in the front office here, I'm thinking I've got to get a new quarterback in there every four years. You know, i got to, I got to find – now, you might get blessed and, and find, you know, the, the Pat Mahomes or maybe you get the guy at Cincinnati, but – you know, those are few and far between now. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you're you're dealing with a quarterback that's probably the sixth, seventh best quarterback in the league right now mm-hmm. to some people. You know, can you afford to pay him, you know, 50-something million dollars? That's the determination. Set the market, essentially. Yeah. yeah, and I've always felt like that when with Stephen Jones, the way to work with Stephen Jones, in my opinion, is, and, and Diggs did it perfectly with this quarter cornerback contract, don't reset the market. If you want to come in three or four, that Stephen Jones appreciates that about you. Mm-hmm. And you're probably going to get the type of deal that you want. You're going to like, okay, well, I'm the third highest paid guy in the league at corner. But you know what? It's still a significant amount of money. Right. You know, I, I think that to me that it's just that resetting of the market. You know, Micah Parsons is going to probably reset the market. Mm-hmm. And you know, I don't know how comfortable the Cowboys are doing that. You know, and especially if you have also at the same time, yeah, CD trying to reset it the is, market or Dak trying to reset yeah, the market. Yeah. Like if you've got three of those guys yeah. that are trying to reset the market, that becomes very, very tough from a right. from a salary cap standpoint. Right, and I I just think that to me that, but like I said earlier, guys, if Dak gets to free agency, I don't think it's going to end well for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. I just don't. And that's that's I guess we're agreeing on that point yeah. because I my thought is the only way you should let that happen right. is if you have a viable option. Yeah, and that's, for him not to and be. And that's what we've talked about with Trey Lance and the problem is though with you know now you're you've got so many things that you have to look at with the coaching situation is like okay, you make a decision on Dak, you're moving on. Okay, are you moving on from Mike McCarthy too? Now, does the new coach is he okay with the evaluation of Trey Lance, yeah. you know, the staff and that, continuing to develop. Yeah. The yeah. staff that was here for the previous two years, no Trey Lance, a potentially new staff would not have that understanding. And now are you going backwards there yeah. or, yeah. you know, so yeah, it's a, that's, it's a, it's, it's a tough, they put tough themselves situation. in a tough spot, but you know, that's what they're going to do. They're going to try and do the best they can to kind of figure it all out. All right, we're going to take our final break. We will come back. Let's get some thoughts on free agency. We have a couple questions from some fans we'll get to as well. This is DallasCowboys.com Radio. 
Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now, Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is, Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Dallas. Take 5 Oil Change. A proud partner of the Cowboys is faster than you think. There's no appointment needed and no waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take 5 is so fast, you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take 5's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Dallas area. And remember, at Take 5, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. Take 5, the official oil change of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code Cowboys. VIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboys VIP. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back to the break. How about this one? Country Music's Party of the Year is back like never before. The Academy of Country Music Awards returns to the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco on May 16th. See the biggest stars in country music and watch the unforgettable live performances. Limited tickets are available now at SeatGeek.com. Welcome back. Final Yee-haw! segment of the break. Oh! <laughs> You remember like when they were when they had all the trailers and I just stuff had to, par- I'm sorry. parked. Remember all the <laughs> yeah, like it was like the it was like the lot out yeah. here on the field yeah. with yeah. all the the trailers and stuff like that where all the people hanging out and yeah. I'm sure you can walk around and have some fun with some of those people in there. No, it seemed like a good time yeah, out there. there I was not did. invited, but it seemed like a good time out there. I was just walking by. I'm like yeah. going, oh okay, who's uh, where's where's this star? Who's that star? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, welcome back. Final segment of the break live in SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. Let's take a quick a question real quick from Ryan Corbin. He said he says, should we be as torn up as we are about not signing free agents? To be honest, uh, there were only a handful. I was interested in, and once I saw what they got, I was glad we didn't get them. I'll reserve judgment until I see this thing in Oxnard. Should fans be as upset as they are? Um, well, it's it's understanding. Mm-hmm. It's understandable to be upset because when something doesn't work out the way you hope it works out and you don't see any type of big changes – it leads you to assume that the result will will therefore be the same or worse as before. So I understand that because I catch myself kind of feeling that way at times of being like, okay, right now, what have we actually done other than, and and you tend to forget your own people that you signed because you're like, okay, that's what we already were used to. And you have to look at those. I mean, they have signed uh, a few players are are key players, but it's still. I feel like I haven't received enough because I don't want to rely in the assumption that they draft well and that those players, those rookies, will be ready, set, go for when the season starts. That's you hoping and assuming that that's how it's gonna play it out because of your record and experience that you've proven to show. So it just, it reminds me of Mozzie. No no shot against him. I'm, I'm just using him as, as an example. And we're hoping that he can take that step up and take yeah. it to the next level this year. And they're definitely showing that they're wanting to rely on him this season. But that's just an example. You draft someone in the first round, comes in and it's not necessarily the player that you're hoping or wanting them to be in that first year and is it's 
right now, because of the people that have left and the people that you've brought in, other than the linebacker position, I don't feel like the team is currently better than before. I don't feel... Because before, with everybody that you had, you felt that you were so close, you know? And I feel like it always kind of feels that way. But last year, it really did feel that way. You're like, okay... The defense, you you think they can be that and, and take that next level and then Quinn, what he's doing, Dak, he's showing what he's got. You're thinking you're so close. And I'm not and I don't I don't want to talk about that Green Bay game. But as far as weapons and talent on the team, you always feel like you just need one more guy or two more players to be the key players and just the extra boost that you need. And now you feel like you're you're taking a few steps backwards, in my personal opinion, as it stands right now with the team. I'll talk about the Green Bay game. That was awful. Mm-hmm. And, and the <clears throat> fact that everything fell in place for you, you know, the health of your team, yeah. the collapse by Philadelphia the last month of the season – the way you won the division, you beat Detroit, now you're the second seed. Everything was set up for you to potentially get the two games at home, maybe have to go to San Francisco. Who knows? Who knows what was going to happen? Maybe San Francisco loses, and then you get to host all three games. You know, The fact that you've lost so many players, you know, a lot of your depth, you know, that that you know, you're mad about the Green Bay loss. Okay, now you're mad about losing all your depth. You know, you're losing your depth to – you lose your coach and your depth to a division rival. So now you're really mad about that. You know, the draft has did not work out last year. You're mad about that. But you should also be mad the fact that Tolbert needs to play better, that also Sam Williams needs to play better. You know, there's some guys – other than Jake Ferguson, there's – a lot of guys in this team need to play better you know, that we've seen here. The thing that bothers fans the most is, you know, you kind of saw, listen, you're, 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 you understand about not signing a one technique, but was there one out there that you could have got? Uh, Daquan Jones from Buffalo, uh, DJ Reader from Cincinnati. Did we not have any money to go get one of those guys? Now you've put yourself in a situation where at 24 in the draft, you're thinking, Damn, are we going to take another one technique here? Because we really don't have one on the roster. You know, there's a good one sitting there. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the Kendrick signing was really good. You know, that was a that was a rally. That was a oh, he's going to San Francisco. Damn. But then you know, Zim gets on the phone and starts to recruit a little and selling him like, hey, listen, I need you. You're going to start. Blah blah blah. You know, so that. But I think fans have a reason to be upset. I do. I just. They, I, they don't. They they see their rival. They see Philadelphia, who seems to be always in cap hell, finding a way to sign guys, and you continually sit there and and get nothing done, you know. Or they'll trade for guys. You know, it's just, it's just, it's a it's a different way of operating, yeah. you know. And it's not for everybody. It's not for a fan base that's disappointed about how the season ended. I'll say this. I, I will never be a person that tells fans how they should feel. Never. Like you have a right yeah. as a fan. Yeah. You invest your time, your money, yeah. your resources into being a fan of a team. So whatever you feel yeah. is fair. That's fair for you. The one thing I will say, and I, I, I tend to be, and this is, I'm going to take my own criticism on this. Mm-hmm. I tend to be, tend to be the most optimistic of people when you think about pretty much anything. I always think optimistically, well, this, this mm-hmm. is kind of good. So why would you worry about it? The one thing that keeps playing in my mind is I think the Cowboys this offseason, the story of this offseason for me so far with the Cowboys is you lost your depth. That's that's but, the, that's the thing. Right, because when you look at this team, how many teams out there in the NFL, you could probably only name a handful if that, have a top five player at edge, cornerback, you could maybe say you got two of those, wide receiver, left guard, mm-hmm. right guard, and then if you wanted to extend out to maybe top 10, quarterback, tight end. Tight end, yeah. So you start thinking about the level of talent they have, the all-pro level, the the Pro Bowl level. They got a lot of talent. They probably got as much talent as anybody else. The question becomes, how are you going to fill in this depth? Yeah. Because inevitably, one of those guys I just mentioned probably is not going to play a full season this year. Mm-hmm. What do you have as far as depth to be able to handle that? And and that's also where, in, in my optimistic brain, I think, okay, well— 
you do still have that second wave of free agency that happens where you can get some – there's some quality guys out there. Some of the guys that left from last year that were on this team, like Gilmore, are still out there and available. Yeah. So there's that second wave and third wave of free agency where you may be able to pick up some veteran guys that can come in and provide that level of, of depth. I have to believe they're going to be better in the draft this year because their history says they don't miss often. No. If you call last year a miss – then I'm going to bet on the fact this year they don't miss right. because last year that was a miss. So when you start thinking about it like that, I can paint a scenario in my mind where I can be less upset about what's happening. But, again, fans have a right to feel what they feel, yeah. and, and I can understand why some may feel the way they well, do. Well, in my non-optimistic <laughs> mind and right that's now. that's why I keep you around. You keep me that other because side. Because <laughs> all I can think about is also yeah. – Next year, yeah. all I can think about is next free agency and how I keep hearing that next free agency is supposed to be even worse yeah. than what it currently is right now. And I can't possibly imagine something worse than what it's <laughs> been right now. So if it's not happening now, when? Because next well, year sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Well, but that's the thing, though, too. If if they are keeping these guys who I just mentioned are those top players around the league, if they're keeping those guys together as the core of the team – and if they have another a good draft this year, then again, their philosophy still remains the same. We're not going to go out and spend big in free agency. Yeah. We're going to draft well and we're going to develop those players and when those players become free agencies, we're all free agents and have a much bigger value, we're okay letting them walk because we feel confident that we can keep replenishing. Yeah. That puts a ton of pressure on your scouting department Huge. and on your on your drafting ability. But so far, they've been pretty good, and they've been good enough to keep a really good roster yeah. using this strategy. But when do you take that next step? Because that's the I thing. They keep replenishing, so and that, that works. Here's a but question. I don't, and I, and I, that's just me saying. I'm like, I'm wondering, like, what what is the missing key ingredient for it to finally happen? So let me ask you this question. Do you think the Cowboys, <laughs> as they were constructed last year, were a player or two away from having more success in the playoffs? Man, they no, they got overwhelmed. They, I, I think yes, I think that was a collapse. I think that was just an overall team collapse. There is what that was. Defensively, they that wasn't the same defense that played and won twelve games. During, and they've had some problems against some really good teams. Green Bay was a hot team at the end. Green yeah, Bay were. was yeah. playing a lot better. They did a great job of scheming you. Uh, you know, I, I felt like you got you got overwhelmed in that game. I don't think that was a player away. I think that was. I think you just got your ass kicked. And that's where I look at it and say the strategy of going all in, as people yeah. say, in free agency wouldn't have helped you last year. Because if you were, if you say we were, we were a player yeah. or two away, then, OK, maybe you should have gone out at some point last year and gone for that big free agent or gone for that big player and yeah. before the trade deadline. That wasn't the case last year because I agree with you, Brian. I don't think they were a player or two away. No. I think that that was a collapse, as you say. They couldn't run the ball. They couldn't run the ball at all. And they all. couldn't stop the run. And they couldn't stop the yeah. run. And then all of a sudden, you got it against a quarterback. And then they picked the worst time to have breakdowns in the secondary. You know, that they had busts where guys are running free. And so I, I think that part of it, that, that, game, that game was not going to be about one player. That was, that was just a total meltdown by the whole entire team in that. Per- okay. Let me tell you something real quick, I think. With free agency now, the Cowboys will draft. They'll sign college free agents. Those yeah. guys will come off their board. They'll spend money on that. Yeah. Watch how much money they spend on draftable players that they that they circle back on. But I also feel like that they're very mindful of the compensatory game. Mm-hmm. We probably won't see anybody sign here until after that compensatory period ends where you can start to sign guys f- for free, mm-hmm. where it doesn't cost you – Compensatory picks because they may need those picks next year for yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. So I, I when is that? Uh, when it, it's after the draft? Yeah, I'm not sure. Exactly it's it's well it after the draft. There's a, there's a I, I got to get the date of it, but I know they're very mindful of compensatory picks, and you do not want to jeopardize that because they got some pretty good. You would think they have yeah. some pretty good. Yeah, it's compensatory yeah, picks they that will. should be coming their way. This they year, will, and that and that and they don't want to sign anybody now. They'll just they'll draft. They'll sign undrafted free agents. Those guys are generally on their board. That's the first place they start. They might have a fifth, sixth, seventh round guys on the board. Those are the first guys they'll go after. And they'll get that done and then maybe supplement with some other veteran players after after that compensatory period uh, goes by the wayside. 
All right. We appreciate you guys joining us. We'll be back next week. Till then, for Brian Broaddus, Amber Garcia, I'm Derek Eagleton. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this,